Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Experience the world through the eyes of an icon with the new Macanudo Inspirado line. Created for a global palette, Macanudo Inspirado defies convention. Handcrafted with the world's finest tobaccos, Inspirado delivers a unique international smoking experience. Find Inspirado Orange at fine tobaccos everywhere and Inspirado Black online and in your favorite catalogs. Ready to be inspired? Check out Macanudo Inspirado now at macanudo.com. CAO has brought you iconic cigars over the years. Brazilian, Italia, La Traviata, done in a playful nature with a unique twist. Travel to the exciting world of CAO and back in just under an hour with any of the groundbreaking CAO world blends. Test the boundaries of style with new age brands in the 95 rated flathead. Honor the past with new classics like Pilon. Treat your palate to an array of flavors with Soul Fire and Moon Trance. At CAO, the experiences are limitless. So what's your next move? Hey, Paul, what's up? What's up, Mark? I right, did you hear about the new cigar that's coming out? Which one is that? There's like 800 new ones every week. The one with the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper. Oh, really? I love Connecticut Broadleaf. Which, uh, who makes it? Um, I think it's Nicaraguan. So, Nicaraguan binder and filler, or it's made in a factory in Nicaragua? Uh, I always have to Google these, and it's taking me like an hour to find out what it is. If this is a frequent conversation with your cigar buddies, look no further than Stogie Geeks News, the only cigar news podcast on the internet. Will Cooper, the man behind Cigar-Coop.com, and Paul Asadorian from the Stogie Geeks produce a weekly show covering the latest cigar news, new blends, cigar manufacturer announcements, and more. Subscribe to the video version on YouTube or get the audio version in your favorite podcast catcher. Head on over to stogienews.tv to subscribe today. Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobaccos from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban seeds grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesterday. By Rocky Patel Premium Cigars, the sun-grown Maduro is hand-rolled at Rocky Patel's boutique factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. This triple-capped, hand-bunched, and hand-rolled cigar is accompanied by a gorgeous broadleaf wrapper. Well-balanced, rich, and decadent, it truly is a great addition to any humidor and worthy of bearing the long-respected sun-grown name. For more information, visit them on the web at RockyPatel.com and be sure to follow Rocky Patel Premium Cigars on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogies of the Week segment. Uh, Will, what do you got this week? Um, I'll start off with um, a cigar uh, by Rocky Patel. It's the Gary Sheffield 500 Home Run Cigar. Uh, Rocky's done a couple of cigars for a couple of athletes. Um, he's done the Gary Sheffield one. This is actually the second uh, release of a Gary Sheffield. He's also done the Ray Lewis cigar. Which the Ray Lewis cigar has actually got some traction in the Charlotte market right now. A lot of people I can see like that. that. Yeah, a lot of people like that cigar, and it's starting to pick up down here. The Gary Sheffield one um, is kind of getting a little forgotten about. 
But um, so folks know that Gary Sheffield and Rocky Patel, there was a cigar released in 2012. And that was more of a limited run. And then the the following year, they actually came out with a box pressed um, cigar for Gary Sheffield with a, with a different blend, I'll say, too. It's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, uh, has Honduran and Nicaraguan tobaccos with a binder and filler. It's made at Rocky's factory. And it's in that Rocky Patel Toro size, I call a six and a half by 52 box press. Um, this, if you've had the first Gary Sheffield cigar and haven't had the second, they're very different. I'd say this is a much better cigar. If you're smoking the Ray Lewis cigar, I'd say this is a more bolder cigar than the, the Ray Lewis cigar. I think is basically doesn't go much past the medium in terms of strength and body. This one's going to start to get up more towards the medium plus. It's got some nice sweetness to it. Nice cedar note in there. There's some of that baker's spice in there. Um, nice smooth finish on the palate with that cigar. I found um, it goes for about 11.50. It's not a cheap cigar, but actually, I was I actually like this cigar better than the Ray Lewis one. And for me, it was a box split, and it's a cigar definitely worth checking out. I think it kind of got forgotten about with the with Ray Lewis's cigar, how well it's doing at least down here. Would you would you say that the Ray Lewis cigar is killing it down there? <laughs> not going. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. I, knew you were I couldn't help. But I tried so hard, Will, and you just <laughs> you kept bringing it up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rocky. If, <laughs> if Rocky's listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh boy. Um, it Will, is hard to tone, tone down the silliness today, isn't it? It is. I'm very, <laughs> silly, I'm very silly today. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm feeling. <laughs> um, Will, tell me about Carolina Cigar Company. Are you familiar with this? Because they're in your Home state of North they, Carolina, or they're in South Carolina. They're in North Carolina, North from Carolina. what I understand. Um, they don't, they don't have a big presence in Charlotte because of the mark. The market in Charlotte is just not a boutique market here. Okay, so really? I. Hmm. It, that, that's it, interesting. It, it is not a Charlotte's not a boutique market. I'll definitely say that. Yeah, you have to go uh, really down to Atlanta where that's it's much very more. interesting, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a t- it's a tough market for the boutiques to make grounds in or Greensboro is the other place I'd say you have to go. So um, I've seen it before. I know they have some blends, but I have not. It's not something I see locally in my stores here. Yeah, so uh, I smoked one of their other blends uh, on a previous show. I wasn't really high on it, but um, I had kind of like a line sampler um, that was uh, brought to me by someone who actually went there uh, and spoke with the the fine folks at Carolina Cigar Company. I smoked their cabinet selection. Um, I, based on what they have on their website, this is a Maduro wrapper, and, and just looking at it and smoking it felt like a Maduro uh, wrapper. It comes in a cedar sleeve, and I really liked this one, Will. This was a this was a really good Maduro. It had some earthy notes, some chocolateiness. You get a little bit of that cedar to kind of balance it off. Like the sleeve yeah. actually gives you some of that kind of cedar. To uh, some tobacco, the cedar will do that, and in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. It, well, because it's you know too like you get that chocolatey kind of earthy Maduro, and you put the cedar on it, it's a much lighter flavor. So smooths I, it somehow. Yeah, yeah balances I, it. it. I thought it was I thought it was pretty good, much better than the other one that I, I tried from them. I rated this one a five or will. That's a very interesting yeah. point, by the way. You you brought yeah. up. The place I, I know that I've seen that up is in Asheville, and I think there's actually a store with that name as well. But okay. Asheville's about two hours from here, and it's up in the mountains. Yes, um, which, Asheville is the mountains. Yeah, Asheville is like you could go. It's seventy degrees here in the winter, and it snow. It could be snowing up there. It's mm-hmm. very microclimate when you get up that way. Yeah, if you ever get up that way, will make sure you you, you check them out and get some. Uh, get I, some I used to get up there a lot more, and you know, there's a few places I used to go to um, up there. So I'll definitely have to check it. out. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's. Dis- I don't know if they distribute beyond Asheville. Is my my mm-hmm. point. So I'd, I'd have to check on that. Awesome. What else have you been smoking, Will? Uh, this is a cigar. I've had a couple of uh, these. Um, it's out of Tabacalera Palma. It's the uh, Hochi Blanco's La Galera, mm. Connecticut, in the um, in the Chavetta size, which is a five and an eighth by fifty robusto size. Um, and this is a, this is a nice cigar. It um, it's one of those cigars. It's it's going to start out quite mild, but it will build up in terms of strength and body as you smoke this thing. Um, it's a, I mean, it's definitely, it's not going to push the boundaries in terms of a Connecticut. So it's going to be in that, you know, more focused on flavor, not as much on strength and, and being heavy on the palate. Um, I, I've had other sizes of this one. Um, 
in particular, I've um, I've smoked a couple of the European so I've smoked the El Lector, which is the Toro, which um, I probably like the El Lector a little better than, than this one. Um, that's a, uh, this is like I said, this is the Robusto size. Um, overall, I, was, I I liked it. It was it was a pleasant cigar. Um, great morning cigar with coffee. I gave it a fiver. Nice. <clears throat> yep. I've smoked through some of the La Galera stuff. I still have some stuff to review, Will. So, and I find this is, again, a, a line that it's very size-oriented. So some of the Habanos, the same thing. I, I say go to a few of the sizes with this one because, again, I think Hochi did a good job. I, I'm, I'm a little more partial to the Habano blend, to be honest with you. But, again, you know, like I said, and I was more partial to a Toro in, in this particular blend. So I think there's, a, but there's plenty of sizes. There's like seven sizes in here, so there should be something for everybody here. Yeah, and there's a, a couple of different lines in there, too, and they, they're so different that you have to kind of really try, you know, like work your way through the line. Is yeah, what exactly. I'm Again, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that. And, and Hochi is, he really knows tobacco. He yes. knows his tobacco so yeah. well. Hochi Blanco knows his tobacco, and he knows how to blend it really. He, he's truly a master blender. And He had a great display at the show. I mean, he came out with three new lines, too, at the show, and he's got a lot of really nice Maduro, a limited... So there's some good a box press as well came out of there. So he's got some good stuff that came out this year. I am. Um, I went to uh, a, an older Drew Estate release, Will, um, and I forget why I had pulled this one like out from one of my humidors I think, at home. I, I think it, it either it could well maybe it, maybe you had it originally. I know it came with the box we got last year. No, it yeah it did. But there, was there a blend from Drew Estate that was based on the Ratzilla? Um, the Ratzilla is kind of all in that Liga Pravada um, yeah. T52 line. Yeah, I smoked of some one of the newer Unicos releases, and I said, oh, i got to go back and smoke the original Ratzilla, and I did, and I'm really glad I did. This cigar aged, re- I mean, this is like a shiny example of how well a cigar can age in your humidor, because when these first came out, I wasn't really high on the cigar. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it was good, but it just didn't like pop for me. Put a couple of years of age on it. Oh my god! That shows good tobacco. Oh, it that was shows just, really good tobacco. I described it as a wonderful bouquet of flavors, perfectly balanced, just the minor, right amount of spice and strength. Uh, awesome smoke production. This is just was an awesome cigar. Uh, this is box worthy all day long. I would love to have more of these in my humidor um, with that couple of years of age on. That them, does happen, or vice versa. <clears throat> Sorry. We can totally yeah. go the other or way. It, it, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm. Depending on um, depending on the blend, depending on the tobacco, the seed versus the earth, and so on, like the whole package of of blending, the whole package of of tobacco, of premium tobacco. Some cigars are going to be extremely um, flavorful and rich, and then you're like, wow, yeah, I want I want to put this in my humidor and wait two years, and then it became bland. Mm-hmm. That happens, or it can happen vice versa. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. I'm going to let it rest, and then. And then you see it laying around after a couple of years, and then you try it again, and then you see that, and then it just became amazing. And um, that's all. I think it's really like, the bouquet of everything, the seed, the earth, the, yeah. the tobacco. I mean, I'm not a big gambler, but with cigars, I like to, I like to do that. I, I like to, to age stuff and smoke it kind of as it progresses and see when it smokes Feel the best. Feel the difference. And then like some cigars don't age very well and others do i i kind of like i think it's fun i think it's interesting um and, and i really and like it when it works that out the first cigar you smoked though was memorable yes. <laughs> enough to remember that you kept it for a few years right right it, the, exactly the, it's such yes. a rich subject it, it's, it, it has it has so many so many sides to no, it no i i agree yeah it, you're you're absolutely right i never thought of it that way for me to age a cigar it has to have captured something and, and stick in my right. mind for me to think about, well, I will really want to see what this cigar is going to do in six months, a year, two years, three years. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's, that's a really positive thing when sometimes we first smoke a cigar and we don't review it as uh, it doesn't get a higher ranking. It's not a really high up there on our scale, but we always put a note in that says, I really want to try this cigar again and age it and see what it does because I think it has potential. So yeah. I think we're getting better at recognizing potential. It's not an easy thing. That's certainly. wonderful to hear. Uh, I I know that um, a lot of smokers, a few smokers, I cannot say how many um, do that, and it's wonderful to hear. Yeah, what, because when there people is, really do that. Well, the other side of it is, you they a lot of people smoke a cigar the first time, and they're like, "Yeah, I don't like that. That's it." You know, yeah. like with it's either they like it or they don't. There's no in between. You know, it's important to keep an open mind. Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons why I created the show uh it was because i heard that feedback from a lot of people and i'm like i was always the guy was like yeah i want to try 
the different sizes, the different lines. I want to age them. I want to see what they do. I really want to experiment and I want to share my experiences. And that's why I want to encourage others to do the same. So, Will, what else you got? Well, so this is kind of a, okay, this is going to be a poster child for this discussion. Um, I smoked a new cigar from Crowned Heads called uh, Le Carem. Um, it's a brand new line that they released at the show. Um, this just came into my local shop. And I was hearing rave reviews on this cigar. Um, I mean, quite a bit of um, people were telling me this is the best cigar that Crown Heads and John Huber uh, has put out. And um, it's actually made by Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Uh, who's, you know, he's one of my favorite blenders out there. So I am a fan of Ernesto's cigars. So am I. It, mm. He's yep. definitely yeah. another master blender Absolutely. legend. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's got a broadleaf wrapper, which I love broadleaf. It's got a Sumatra binder and Nicaraguan filler, and I smoked the Robusto. Um, so I smoked this twice. I went and smoked one yesterday, and I went back and smoked it again, and I've decided not to give it a rating. Um, this cigar was an example of a cigar that should not have been put on the shelf. It, it, it was unsmokable. It was, it, but I can't say it was a bad blend. Because in my opinion, I smoked this was this was a cigar that was not ready to hit the store shelf. Um, so I I don't know, and like I said, that's why I went back and smoked it again today because I had it planned for the Stogies of the week, and I needed to get one in there. Um, and I've been accused of being hard on Crown Head, so I I'm gonna be fair on this. What I smoked was not ready, mm. so I'm gonna go back. But a lot of people have been raving about this cigar, but what I smoked was Young Tobacco. It just seemed like it was going through a sick period almost right now. So. But it's not going to stop me from going back and smoking it again. You yeah, know, I, I reckon because I, you recognize after potential. how much aging. Right. Yeah, I'm, that might be a, a blend that needs further aging. You, you just talked about a broadleaf Emma that you felt was not ready to. Sh- now I understand why mm-hmm. certain cigars are shipped though too. So yes. I, I, and why they're on the shelf. So yes. I'm not criticizing, you know. But in this but case, I probably I probably would put it. And away I don't want people to get the impression that Will's right. given it a bad review because. I mean, let's talk about one of my favorite blends, which is what I'm smoking now, the uh, Fuente Opus X. Mm. I've smoked so much Opus X, like fresh and aged, that I know by sniffing the foot and the aroma that I get whether it's ready to smoke or not. For my right. palate. And I mean, everyone's palates are different. Subje- Some, it is subjective. Absolutely. For my palate, I know, like I almost get, um, and this is going to sound horrible, but this is one of my favorite cigar lines, so keep that in mind. It almost smells like like cat urine, like a, almost like a like a really pungent aroma. And when it smells like that, I'm like, it's not ready. Yeah. And I can almost, I go back into my collection and then I'll go back in six months or a year and I'm like, nope, still not ready, still not ready. Until when you sniff the foot, it turns, the aging process turns it into this like cinnamon, cinnamon oh, yeah. kind of sweetness that you get from the foot. Then I know it's ready to smoke. I know it sounds weird. No, and it doesn't. It, it, mean, but that's the, it but means that it got the time to balance out. And I'm not, I'm not the expert. That's just my palate. There's, and, and, and it's interesting because in the Opus X line, there are certain ones that will have a more pungent aroma on the foot, but they'll smoke really great yeah. even out of the box. But yeah. certain other sizes just need to age. Well, again, this is a rich specific. subject. I mean, um, you know how it is to, to, to be in a factory and just take cigars off the table, yep. off the rolling table. And at the moment... You love it. I, I love mm. it because you're in the factory and it's right. yes. you feel yes. it and you feel the tobacco. However, if you if you take a cigar off the table, and bring it home mm-hmm. and smoke it a week later, that's what this ta- that's, that's what the this sick tastes period. Like. That's the sick it. period. Right, but also I mean I think that speaks to where you smoke it as well. And oh, sometimes yes. I will. Uh, most of my reviewing is done, you know, here in the studio during the day, like while I'm working, and I try and take time to, you know, go next door to the cigar lounge. Uh, meet with someone, have a cigar with them, and and still be working, but smoking in a different environment, right, with a different person. And then at home, maybe after everyone goes to bed, I have some opportunity to have a cigar, usually a smaller size because it's late at night, but then I'll I'll smoke a cigar when there's no work involved, I'm just relaxing and having a cigar. And I try and work that into as many reviews as I can, and I try and go back and smoke things in those different... Will, a lot of my, like, when I go back and redo a cigar, it'll be my workshop at night. I'm like, hey, I reviewed that cigar like a year or two ago or whatever. I'm like, I'm going to smoke and see what it's smoking like right. now. Doing my workshop in a different different environment. And I think that's an important aspect of reviewing that 
I don't know that everyone does, but I, th I think it's important. important. And, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and I really appreciate that you and everyone who actually do that, who, who, who do review once and then review again and keep an open mind. Mm. Yeah, it, it would be unfair to, for me. I could throw a Stogie Geeks rating on it. It wouldn't be fair to cigar. But I remember, you know, hey, look, I remember the, remember the East Stunners, Paul? It was yes. the same thing with the same East Stunners the we East had. Stunners. And they came around. So, and I know, it, I know an Ernesto cigar can come around. This one, it, and like I said, people have really liked this cigar, but I think. Well, I, and I think to a certain extent, the La Historia, um, a lot of people, another, well, they yeah. were very critical. And, and that's one that I liked. Um, and, look, and look what it look, came into. Yeah, and it's it gotten did. nothing but better since then. So yeah, um, there you go. So I smoked the, a leaf by Oscar Lancero in the Corojo, and I I do have to say um, this is the second one I I've reviewed this month. I love the packaging. I just think it's so. I, first, it's well. I think it's pretty innovative. You don't see a lot of cigars out there wrapped in another leaf. In a leaf, yeah. And I like the experience of just handling another leaf of tobacco. That like I don't have to worry if I damage it or break it. I can just kind of like you can play with I it. I can hold the you leaf. You can feel tobacco. Yeah, I can stretch it out. Yeah. I can unroll it. I can and you get an aroma. I feel like when you take the the cigar, you get an aroma from that wrapper and the aroma from the cigar. I think, I don't know if it, I can't say for certain if it makes it any better that they're wrapping it in tobacco. But I like, from a consumer's perspective, I like the experience. That whole experience of just working with that leaf to take it off and getting the aromas from that tobacco, I like it. I, I think truly it, I think agree. It, I think it works. I, 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 I really truly I don't think it makes the agree. cigar taste any better or different, but uh, maybe it does. I don't know. But It is an experience. It uh, is an experience, I agree yes. that leaf has an amazing concept. Both marketing-wise, mm -hmm. um, the feeling of experiencing tobacco, of touching it, feeling it. Of, of course, even though it's dried out by then, and yeah. it doesn't matter. You still have it because no, it's cool. very few people actually live next to, <laughs> next to a factory yeah. in Latin yeah. America. Yeah. And uh, the name, Leaf, uh, that is a full concept that really embodies tobacco, uh, the, the experience of tobacco, the name... It is definitely a great concept. That, that's another because we spoke about name and sizes and packaging, and I think Leaf is a good example. Well, and, well, and I think it's it's a really awesome thing because we have this debate like: should you take the cellophane off your cigar? Should you leave it on the cigar? Should there be cellophane on there in the first place? Should you cut the end off of your cellophane? Should you cut just one end off of your cellophane or both ends of the cellophane? There's that whole debate. This removes it entirely. Like <laughs> you can true. just leave the tobacco right on that's the true. cigar, and that it's perfectly fine. That is such a good fine. point. That is such a good and that point. For, and it serves the purpose of protecting the yeah. cigar inside. So that that's well, another reason why I like it. Cellophane to begin it. with, I um I I believe even if everyone don't do it, I'm not going to say what's right or wrong. Absolutely not. In my opinion, I think it it does make it at least easier to to maintain a cigar if at least in the shops and in, in retail yeah. they have cellophane on because. Tobacco wrapper is so delicate, and the, you, you have break. to protect Even it. My, oh, now, you saw my home. humidors. My humidors are a couple of, couple yeah. of coolers, and we're always in there adding new cigars, taking out cigars, sorting through cigars, yep. sending out contests. And if you're in a hurry, you, you kind guys, of move it around. Guys in the studio, like we've got cigars marked. Like this is you smoke from here. Like here's the you know the mm -hmm. designated. Anyone who wants a cigar, take from here. Thank so, you, by the way. And yes, yeah, and sometimes <laughs> we smoke through more of other brands than than others, but. <laughs> cigars get damaged if they're not in cellophane in, in that environment. So, yes. um, but this cigar, the I really like the Corojo. I had a nice that like Corojo spice. Yeah. Uh, in this Lancero was really good. It had the earthy component. I thought to kind of balance out the spice. I really liked it. I, I would probably age this one for a little longer. I had to relight it a couple more Corojo times. Corojo is, is a rich and complex seed. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And I it's felt great. like it retained a little more moisture. And this was a, a sample from the show. We can say that, right? It was a sample um, from the they show. Actually, actually, Island Jim gave us these before the show. Okay. I had them sit. So okay. this is pretty. Now, there's another cigar you had. Did you see that one with the candela sleeve? Yes, I did see that, that one. That's in there. from the show, and that's the Oscar. That's okay. what they did. Another, they put a candela sleeve instead of a tobacco leaf. Mm. Yeah, that that was really cool too. So I did like this one. I I, I rated yep. it a five. I thought it was a really good Lancero. Yep. Back to you, Will. So you know, here's another. So again, back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, here's a guy when you name a who who it works for when you put a strange name around a cigar and a, and a Vitola name. Uh, mm -hmm. This is Caldwell, right? Oh yes. And Caldwell are you the saying, King is. Are you saying Robert's kind of strange? If you saw the video <laughs> being shot, I if think you saw the video. 
saying. I think the expression in my house was, that Caldwell guy's nuts. I love how I love how that's how it started. Well, if you saw the video, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's don't play that video with Jasper. That says around. a lot. Yeah, and then there yeah. you go. <laughs> Robert's a great guy. That we've had him on the show multiple yeah. times. So Wonderful. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, and he's, yeah. But uh, so he called this guy the King is Dead, and the and the this is a uh, six by three Bella Coso called the Last Payday. So I wouldn't expect anything different from Robert because that's part of his creativity angle, you know. And I, and I think you know that cigar works real well for for his creativity angle. Um, this is a cigar that um, I've ha- you know this has been I actually it recently came into my shop. Um, so I smoked it. It's got this Negrito wrapper, which Caldwell says is not one that's often used as wrapper components. Uh, it's got Corojo uh, binder, and it's got Corojo, Negrito, and HVA in the filler. Um, it's made at Tabacalera William Ventura. Um, I really like this cigar. It's, uh, it's got some nice notes of milk chocolate. It's got this natural tobacco uh, undertone throughout the whole thing. Uh, you get a little bit of red pepper. Um, it, it's now, this is a line I found that the Bellicosa seems to be the best size for me in this line. Some of the other sizes just didn't quite do it for me. Uh, but the Bellicosa just is one that came together for me with this. Um, I enjoyed the packaging. I enjoyed the cigar overall. Um, I gave this one a box split. Nice. You yep. did touch a lot of very interesting subject within that one cigar. It, you touched the name, the name of the skew, the tobacco itself, and, and all the Corojo. All, yeah. the, uh, all the Corojo, but, you know, different primings, different, uh, uh, you know. And we spoke about that earlier today. It was um, about that. I think it's, we spoke about that with Paul, is it to, to, to really give the, the, the details of a blend. And mm-hmm. I believe in giving the details of the blend because it, it, brings, um, it brings education. I, I, I believe in education. Like, the, the more educated you are, the more you're going to be able to choose what you want to smoke, what you want to buy. And then we spoke about yeah, but you want to give away your secret. Remember, you, you, mm-hmm. we, and and I and my and, and I said why, well, you know, you can say the seed of the cigar. I mean, the the seed, the priming, mm-hmm. where it's grown. At the end of the day, it's uh, it, it all depends. You can have uh, it depends on the primings, depends on the proportions, depends on 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 a lot of aspects of blending. Which is not written. You're not going to well, write down how, how many years of age to this seed, to, to, to that earth, that, with, and so on. The farming, so how mu- the weather conditions, oh. how much fertilizer yes. was added to the soil, all and all the little tricks that they do from seed to yeah. cigar. So telling all those details, yeah, like uh, I tell the seed, I tell uh, the priming, you know. It was interesting. I um, tell if it's a lejero seco or a viso. The, um, it doesn't matter because then you pr- proportion well, who's the it. Who's the university guy? Uh, oh, um, Jorge, 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 yeah, Jorge, yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, Jorge Ar- Armantero, yeah, yeah, that's right. So he said exactly the same thing. He said, you know, yeah, people talk about the blend, but you know, uh, Piloto Cubano, he's like, you could have three different farms and you get three different tobaccos that are completely and different. And let's not forget the priming and, <laughs> and the, then the proportion. Priming, proportion. How much percentage yeah. of every? He you says, so it's really copy. not about. You, you can't copy. Yeah. You can tell every single s- secret. You cannot copy it because you don't know the proportion. You don't know right. how much percentage of each you have in it. You don't know <clears throat> how much aging to this priming versus how much aging to that priming. It, it's, it's such so many details, mm-hmm. and um, and that's what we spoke about. For example, Frey and Señorial, and and you mentioned Piloto Cubano that we use a lot of it. They are completely different yes. cigars. Yeah. There are so many similarities. If if you only look at the at the words, if you only read the blends. You know, you're going to see a lot of similarities. Then you smoke the cigars. It could be our cigars, Senora versus Freya versus, versus Leaf versus whatever you want to, you know, the king is dead. Like, doesn't matter what. You can you cannot copy it because it's it's so, so personal to, also, to the people in the factory. To back up your point, I was talking to, what did you call the people who are uh, uh, the, the master blenders? Uh-huh. I was talking to one of the master blenders the on your list. And the I won't say blenders. who it was, but he said there was a... Uh, Kind of like a, uh, a a test or a uh, you know like a fun project they did where they were all smoking unbanded cigars and trying to determine in a fully blended cigar which type of leaf was used in each one. Mm-hmm. No one got it right. No one no. out of the master blenders. It's but hard. he said that when you smoke um, 
the puritos, mm -hmm. he's like, then you, you can tell. You can oh, tell yes, when you yes. smoke a leaf by itself. But a fully blended one, he's like, yeah, no one can no, tell. When you blend, you, ha you have to smoke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you blend, you, you smoke every, every leaf as a leaf mm -hmm. itself. And it, that's not a pleasure. It doesn't matter how great the tobacco yeah. is. Sometimes it it's not. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I agree. And then also, um, this whole rave about ligero, um, light up just a pure ligero leaf. You have to relight it like every second. Like you, you, yeah, you can't yeah, keep yeah. it going, and, and you're not gonna. There's no way to enjoy it. And then yeah. you blend it in, and then it's like, wow, I love this tobacco. And right. yes, I do. You do. We love it. But so it, it, there's so many there's so many aspects. Well, and speaking of a blend, that it, really, it's a matter of respect for tobacco. If you know, yeah. for me, it's a matter of respect for tobacco and respect for what who is a master blender. What does a master blender mean? What does legend mean? Mm -hmm. I have such respect for that. And, Absolutely. And, and what you just now, mentioned now just we'll, touched that. Um, tell me about Davidoff Yamasa. What what is, what is this new line from Davidoff? Because I have not researched it in any way shape form or fashion but talk about while will's doing it uh talk about legends hanky kellner mm. oh and, he and the, is a blends. legend oh definitely it, he is and i've read articles about he it knows the tobacco blending. oh, oh unbelievable God. the references that i've had when i researched tobacco a lot of times point back to hanky kellner right um yep. and this davidoff yamasa was one of the ones i smoked recently so will what is this project the uh, new line that, that davidoff came out with okay so yamasa tobacco is a region in the dominican republic um, and it's a, it's a place where Davidoff has been investing in for some time. And I guess it's been, from what Hanky was explaining to me, this is before Yamasa even came out, it was a very, very difficult place to get a good tobacco yield. So they were work, they, he worked extensively, I guess, on adjusting the pH levels of the soil, um, you know, the kind of, because I guess they, he felt that the area had potential for whatever reason. Um, so they, they've been using Yamasa in various uh, blends. And if you look at some of the limiteds, they're, they're out there. But um, now they've come out with a line of their own under that Black Label series. So this follows the Nicaragua and the Escurio. So the, the Nicaragua is Nicaraguan, uh, the Nicaragua Puro. Escurio had the Brazilian tobacco. And now this one is a Yamasa-centric blend with uh, a Yamasa wrapper, a uh, Yamasa binder with San Vicente tobacco and a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican um, fillers. And this was the big, this was the big showcase cigar from Davidoff this year. And I saw the size you smoked, and I'm glad you smoked this size first. This was the Toro? The Toro. Yes. And so, holy crap, did they knock it out of the park with this I one. I have not tried wow. it. Wow. I have not tried I, it yet. Talk about a cigar that commands your attention. Just incredible flavors. It takes you on a journey. All kinds of things going on. It holds like I couldn't pay attention to anything else I was doing oh, that's, because oh, that's the, great. The, the cigar you, just you need to your focus. It's a, you yes. gotta need to command your attention with the cigar. Absolutely. It's so great that Henke Kellner is one of those who can make under the same name Davidoff so many different. different. Like, that's what I said as about if it's different blenders. <laughs> different, I said, but it, it I is said the exactly same that. I said blender. It's, yes, it, it, and it's different from every other Davidoff and. Somehow different from everything else on the market. I mean, the cigar is so unique in the flavor profile, and that's one of the reasons why um, it got. Uh, that's incorrect in the in the blog post. Well, it got a Chuck Norris rating, uh, which we would fight Chuck Norris for him. <laughs> so I said, "Look out, Chuck Norris! Here I come." I, I would fight that. Chuck I Norris for so, it all so I, day. That is long. so awesome. <laughs> so now, now I'm now I'm gonna say this. I think there's one size you're gonna like better. Really? Yep. That, I, that, make him, that make him an even my, higher. We're like waiting. <laughs> that make him in like my, an even higher rating. Will <laughs> this it, was my it. this was no uh, so this was my second favorite size. You got to smoke the belly, the pyramid. Okay. Um, and I'm curious to see what you'll think of that because I, I, I thought the pyramid that. was even. I better. imagine that this, one must have a lot of complexity. This smoked better in the bigger sizes. Mm. I, so I think they smoked better. In, and you you got that. I sent it to you. It was in that star shaped box kind of. It was. Yeah. They were. Yeah. So that. Yeah, that came back. From, that was from the show um, where we got the. And yeah, I smoked a awesome. ton of Yamasas. At the awesome, dinner. awesome cigar. Yeah, really, they they knocked it out of the park with this one. They did. It, it, when, when you find these at your retailers, you should buy them because yeah. it is awesome. Yeah, no, I, I, I knew you were going to like it, but now I'm really curious to see what, what we think about the Bellicose. I want to say Will and I have been smoking cigars together long enough and doing the show long enough where 
you probably called my rating on this cigar, Will. Yeah, you I, well, I, thought, to... I thought maybe it was a little – well, when I saw the three – I didn't know you had a Chuck Norris on it because I looked at it. I said, okay, that cigar, I transported it back. I'm like, but yeah. I know it's not the best size in the line. I think it's the second best. So I was like, okay, that's why I'm curious. But no, the Toro was it, – yeah. I think Chuck you're really going to like the belly. I think you're really going to like the belly. It was um, – and you called it, dude. You definitely – you called. You said I would like – so we kind of know each other's profiles at this point, which is kind of Yeah, scary. I mean, the one thing I was really bummed that Paul wasn't at the Davidoff dinner because there was this was the featured uh, cigar there, and I just – I smoked them all night. I mean, that's – I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you smoked yeah. quite a few already. <laughs> Yeah, to, yeah, today, I smoke uh, slow. Like I, I nurse, I, I nurse, like I, I nurse one cigar. You finish three well, of I, them. I switched <laughs> to a, the Opus X Robusto, which I'm smoking now, which is really, really awesome. These probably have like six years of age on them. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Speaking of which, um, so I'm I'm reaching the end of my of of my uh my LFD uh uh TAA yes uh, Maduro. And we spoke about body and all that and about flavor and how I said that it started, you feel immediately the boom of like the, this, this, these flavors and you, you feel the kick, but that it wasn't overpowering. Mm-hmm. But now I'm smoking very slowly. The second half, I'd smoke very slowly. And the final third, I'm smoking very slow because now I really feel this it, nicotine. It does amp up Now I strength. feel this yes. signature, yes. Afro Dominicana strength to it. And uh, that's that's fantastic to feel a cigar grow. Yes, like we talked about, we talked about serious things. We talked about a lot of silliness, but this cigar has kept my my, my attention all the time. And so has your cigar. So has Will's cigar. Like we, we've spoken about so many different brands, mm-hmm. different skews, different sizes, and and um, to to speak to each other, have these discussions of the of all of our cigars. We, when, what's great is that we are smoking different cigars, yeah. all of us, and we feel how they change and they grow. Throughout the smoke, and that's 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 fantastic complexity, mm. and that's very important in a blend, according uh, in, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, uh, complexity I think is somewhat overrated because I mean, this robusto is not overly complex. Right. I mean, you still get that little like Opus X kind of leathery component that you get with that, but I find as Opus X ages, I get that cinnamon sweetness that. If it just does that the whole time, oh, yeah. I'm totally fine. I mean, I'm complexity totally doesn't mean that the, the that it has to change all the time. No, right, complexity right. can be just just in the tobacco itself. Mm-hmm. Complexity in the flavor. Do you feel one flavor? Or do you feel five, six flavors? Right. I mean, th- th- there's a lot of there's a lot of meanings to complexity and. Um, Absolutely. Will you got any more cigars on your list? I think yeah, you do. I got my cigar of the week. Oh yeah, um, let's hear it. And it, and uh, it's interesting because Emma just mentioned the brand. It's La Florida Medicana. Mm-hmm. Um, and I smoked the, um, I guess the 2015 reincarnation of the uh, Coronado uh, in the 6x52 Toro size. Now I love the Coronados, um, and particularly the cigar I've always liked, actually in the double Toro, that that 7x54 I thought was always a good size. Um, this has been sitting probably in my in my humidor for about eight to ten months. This is from when uh, we got we got these from John Carney. And oh my goodness, this thing is just this is this was just knocked out of the park how how well this was smoking. Um, it's got the coffee notes, it's got a nice woody component to it, a little bit of black pepper along the way. Which it's one was this Will? The Coronado. Oh, I don't did we I didn't get did I get some of those? Good question. I don't think I did. Wow. I I loved the cause I love the when I thought you I said, said that. yeah, but I loved the original Coronados a, yeah, a so lot, re- a lot, yeah. Yeah, and they repackaged it, right? So it's the same blend, but I guess it's different vintages of tobacco. Um, but they brought it, it was discontinued for a while. It was, yeah. And, and they brought it back, they put more LFD-style packaging on it. Now, I guess with the new FDA rules, they can change the packaging, or the banding, I should say. Mm. Yeah, um, well, that's a great blend. And the Coronado yeah. was really popular, like, but, back in the day. And how did you so. feel the difference when you said it was the same blend, but... Um, well, so when I had it last summer, I thought it was late last summer. I thought it was good. It was again, it just, you know, I, I didn't quite think it was up to where I, I had smoked. Cause I used to smoke a lot of this cigar. I mean, I remember 2008, I was smoking these quite a bit. So I just felt all right. Maybe it's a, maybe it needs a little time in the humidor. Um, and it put the time in the humidor, and this thing's smoking fantastic right now. It, and it, it's smoking pretty much how I remember that woody that woody note I get from that cigar was something that always stood out. It had a it's in the medium plus range, I would say. It's not an over the top uh, Lajero bomb from uh, Lito Gomez, but it's a box worthy cigar. This is 
this is smoking really, really good right now. Um, I gotta get more. I, yeah, I, I gotta get more of these. Um, so I smoked a, a Hoya Red, and was this a new size? I'm assuming it came in my uh, uh, package from you, Will. The, uh, I just had an extra, and I put what it size, in. There. What size is that? Which size did you send me, Will? It's kind of a. I think I sent like, you the, a robusto. It's yeah, it's like a big robusto. <laughs> yeah. Like five it, and a half by fifty. Yeah, because they gave us some they gave us some cigars, and I think they they gave us a couple of the reds. Um, and, um, I knew you liked it. So I threw a couple of like, you know, stuff I knew you liked yeah. in, in there. There's no. more stuff, by the way, coming your way. Awesome. By the way, so yeah, no, I, I really, um, I really like this one. Um, I think it'll get better with some age. Um, you know, I know this came from my BCPR probably, you yeah. know, needed a little bit of rest. Um, but I like the nice earthy flavors on the Hoya mm -hmm. Red. Yeah. Um, it, it's earthy, but it's not, uh, like over the top in one category of earthy, right? So it just gives you a little bit of that earthiness. Um, and it's not over the top in strength. I'm it's very, good medium body. I'm smoke. very sensitive to earthy notes. Yeah. Um, and a lot of Nicaraguan tobacco has this very rich earthy notes to it, which which is very much uh, f felt in, in in a lot of the Hoya cigars. And um, just like you said about Hoya Red, it has it has this comfortable mm -hmm. th this con comfortable stage of earthiness. Because it's because earthiness is not easy. Uh, I mean, y y sweetness and spice and. Uh, Creaminess and woodsy is is easier, like on a big range. But earthiness has to be right. If it it's too to earthy, it yes. becomes almost muddy. Right. I, I'm right. sorry, that's not a nice word, but no, I, I I'm totally sensitive agree. to earthy. But if yeah. earthy is good, it's, it it gives this a great a toro, tobacco it. feel. A, was that a tobacco toro? taste? I yeah. was gonna say it was different from the it it it, it was it felt like a different size than the repustos yeah. that I had smoked through. Yeah. Yeah, it's a six by fifty two. Yeah, I liked it. I it was yeah. good. I rated it a fiver. That's good. That's yeah, solid. Like I said, that was one that got transported. It's funny because I have these cases of, of cigars. Uh, so there was stuff I put into the Avo case, and then I have this other uh, suitcase with, with, like, basically it's a Coolador right now because it's, it's got all the uh, Bovitas in there. So that's the next batch I got to go through and send you. So there's more stuff. Awesome. Well, I want to thank our special guest, Emma Victorson, thank you for no, coming on the show. Thank you for having me again. It was wonderful right. having you in studio. And it's so, it's so much more fun to be in studio. Yes. Oh, it's Feel to free to totally come, different come dynamic. Come back anytime. Oh, I'd leave, love to. Leave, yeah. leave Jose at home. No, I'm just leave kidding. Leave Jose at home. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the whole family next time. Yeah. yeah our kids Everyone. can play together. It'll oh, be fine. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to hear us if we bring all the kids. That's Yeah. yeah they'll be, <laughs> They keep themselves occupied. I bring my kids to the studio every once in a while. Yeah, but you say right there. there. Over there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Over there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'd probably still hear them, though. <laughs> probably, yeah. Will, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so and, much. Um, so next Monday is yep. episode 200. Is that correct? That is correct. And we've got some special interviews lined up for you. The interview with Abe is, is awesome. Ooh. Yeah, we, yeah um, Abe Flores, a rare in-studio interview. And you're not going to want to miss that interview. It was, it was he's awesome. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it turns out that Abe and I have a very similar background, yeah. which I can't really say about a lot of people in the cigar industry because, I mean, a lot of people in the cigar industry, their background is tobacco, right? My background is technology, and Abe and I have the very same background. That is, that is and we're so about the same age and everything. That's true. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's also yeah. this IT guy. Yeah, so that's true. We, but we, like, graduated college and got our job, like, around the same time in the late 90s and early 2000s, which was the boom of the dot-com. So Abe and I, like, we were sharing stories, and we hit it off. It was really funny. It was a great interview. Great. Yeah. We talked Did about everyone understand you, though? No, we talked about cigars a little bit. Because <laughs> we talked yeah. about so, so much about IT. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, it was, it was Funny, Not everyone I, I, understands technology. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I had okay. to tell Paul. He's got. I didn't know if Paul knew he had an IT background. I can. I said. I, I knew it as I, soon I, as I he walked in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for watching. We'll see everyone next week on the Stogie Geek Show.